What is up guys, Taiki here, and in this video, I want to discuss how to minimize taxable events and end of year planning as a yield farmer. So if you like the content, please like and subscribe and leave a comment in the comment section below. So let's get started. Uh, you know, disclaimer, this is not financial or tax advice. I'm just some dude on the internet that has a farmer hat and a rake in his office, right? So take everything I say with a grain of salt. Okay, that being said, you know, I've been flipping all coins. It's been profitable. It's been super fun. Definitely fuels the dop do it definitely fuels the dopamine addiction. However, you know, as we get closer to the end of the year, we have to consider the implications of the tax man, right? Like Uncle Sam knocking on our doors, and you do not want to mess with the IRS. At least I'm not messing with the IRS. And there are tax implications, obviously, when it comes to crypto, because any profits that you realize in Q4 has to be paid in 2022, right? In April. However, if you can delay those capital gains to, you know, next year, right, in Q1, let's say January, then whatever, you know, profits that you realize, you know, you pay taxes on that in 2023. And in DeFi, when you can actually earn such high yield on stable coins, you know, delaying taxes has a lot of, a lot of value, right? Because if you can delay taxes for 12 months and you can earn, let's say, 30% on those stable coins, you know, it just means that you're going to be, you know, generally increasing your net worth uh, as long as you're not taking on too much risk. So me personally... I want to minimize the amount of taxable events that I'm going to be incurring for the rest of the year, right? So, you know, for the next two months, I'll try not, not to take on any taxable events, which is going to affect my strategy for the end of the year. So, you know, my end of the year outlook is to accumulate assets that I don't plan on selling for the end of the year, right? Like, if we're in November, right, like, I'll be less inclined to enter new volatile altcoin, uh, I guess, trades, uh, especially if I'm taking on too much risk. And even if I, you know, like, make a 2x or something, right, which, you know, obviously, if I make a 2x, like, I, I don't mind paying those capital gains, but, uh, you know, it gives me less utility uh, when I can just, you know, use like, I, I, assets like Bitcoin and ETH, which are collateralizable assets, because when you borrow against your assets, you don't actually realize capital gains, right? This is kind of what, like, what rich people do, where they just, like, have a house or, like, you know, some, like, high net worth or it's just, like, some highly valued asset, they can just borrow against it, right? Uh, and, you know, through, through DeFi, through money markets, you know, you can do this yourself as well. And, you know, also, uh, we're in this era of incentivized liquidity everywhere, right? Especially when it comes to money markets. So let's take advantage of it while it lasts. I feel like we're spoiled when it comes to these super high rates, but, you know, they're not going to last forever. So, you know, let's take advantage of them while it lasts. And also, this also goes into the idea of opportunity cost and why I don't like to, you know, also be in like 100% altcoins. Because let's say you're in like a bunch of altcoins, right? And don't really, really own collateralizable assets and you see a new opportunity. Well, if you want to enter that new opportunity, right, that you think is good, well, you're going to have to first sell whatever assets that you have, which you're going to pay taxes on to enter this opportunity, which has higher risk, right? Because what if you sell something and it keeps going up? Uh, and there's also opportunity cost because, you know, like if you realize gains, you have to pay taxes, yada, yada, yada. So, you know, what I've been doing, like what I've been focusing on is like, you know, stacking Bitcoin and ETH, uh, as well as other collateralizable assets, because if I can use them as collateral and borrow against it and then farm with those stable coins, I don't have to pay, I, I don't have to pay cap capital gains, right? Uh, so this is an old screenshot, so like the rates aren't this good, but you know, there are, there is like incentivized uh, liquidity everywhere. And for example, in like, you, know, you deposit Bitcoin or you use collateral because you think it's going to asymmetrically appreciate over time, you borrow against it and you put those stable coins into, let's say, Curve, earning 25%. Well, you're indirectly earning yield on your Bitcoin and or ETH that you think is going to appreciate in value anyways. So, you know, it's more of a different way to think about your portfolio construction. It's a different way to yield farm uh, because a lot, of, a lot of people have this conception that yield farming is like, you know, taking on a bunch of risk, you know, being a liquidity provider, you know, just like, you know, these volatile coins. But, you know, there are safer ways to earn yield on your assets. So, uh, you know, I, I feel like the longer you are in DeFi, the longer you are in farming, uh, the less you, the, the less scared you should be about debt, right? Uh, I feel like debt is just a scary word. It's like, oh, I, I, I don't want any debt. Like debt is bad. Like, you know, like education is just like help. Like you know, just debt is just like a has like a bad connotation to it. However, in DeFi, like when you're paying five percent interest to borrow stable coins and deploying it into a farm and earn, earning thirty percent or you know whatever rate that you're earning, then debt isn't that bad. In, in actuality, you're just unlocking, like, I guess, the equity of your collateral, such as Bitcoin or ETH, and then earning yield on those assets, right? As long as you're not being a pure DGM with how much you're borrowing. And also, the, the value of Bitcoin and ETH, uh, I guess, in DeFi, is that you can, bridge, you, you, can, you, you can bridge Bitcoin and ETH on any, I guess, ecosystem and use it as collateral, right? Like, if you, let, let, I don't know, let's say, like, you have, I don't know, like, so, some random altcoin, right? You can't bridge random altcoins everywhere, right? Because sometimes it's not supported. 
Uh, but with Bitcoin and ETH, right, there's, if there's a money market, you can use it as collateral and then borrow against it, right? Because that's not a taxable event. You never have to sell your Bitcoin or ETH. You can use it as a store of value or money. Uh, and you, you can you know, use uh, whatever stable coins that you borrow from to farm or trade with, right? Personally, I can't even imagine a scenario where I don't own any Bitcoin or ETH. So, you know, part of the reason I've been stacking Bitcoin and ETH is because, you know, I'm not going to plan on selling it anytime soon. And, you know, if I, you know, bridge to new ecosystems like Harmony, Phantom, etc., I can use it as a liquidity source on all chains when I turn it into a collateral asset, right? Collateral asset is super important, especially as we get closer to the end of the year because of the fact that you don't have to incur capital gains. So, you know, simplifying life and my DeFi strategy, you know, yes, I will keep looking for plus EV opportunities, right? If, you know, if I see an opportunity such as like Phantom in early October, of course, you know, like it, it makes sense to enter it, right? Uh, obviously, like if you see a crazy opportunity, right, it makes sense that like you might have to, you know, pay short-term capital gains uh, this year, but you know, if you can like three extra money or something, then yeah, of course it's worth it. But generally, uh, from, from a more macro scale, right, from a, my macro strategy is going to be, you know, bridging Bitcoin ETH to new ecosystems that have trusted money markets. And depending on the chain that you're on, right, uh, if you're on like Avalanche, you can use AVAX as collateral, right? So it gives me you, it gives you more utility, right? We always, we, always, we always have to think about, you know, what can this asset do for me? Like what utility does this asset ha uh, have for me? Uh, and if you kind of have that mindset, then, you know, you're going to just over time just grow your portfolio as long as you're not taking on too much risk. And yeah, it's just like a more humble way to approach the markets. So like I mentioned on Avalanche, there's Aave, right? Considered Aave. Uh, and you know, you can use Avalanche as collateral. Uh, there's uh, Banker Joe, right? On Trader Joe, uh, XYZ. Um, they also have incentivized liquidity. And there's also Bank Key, right? Uh, they were the first money market on Avalanche. They have, I mean, they all have over a few billion dollars uh, in locked uh, TVL. So, uh, you know, these are trusted money markets. Uh, it's, it's I, I consider them to be low risk. You always have to do your own research, uh, but you know you can just use a bunch of these assets as collateral, which is really really nice. And you know this is like the safest yield that you can earn, right? Uh, which is like Curve, where you can deposit you know, stable coins onto the Aave pool and earn roughly twenty five percent on your stable coins. So you know even if you're feeling risk off, you know maybe uh, you rotate into Bitcoin ETH, right? You use it use it as collateral uh, and just like borrow against it because if it goes up, then you know you're holding something that's appreciating and also on top of that you're earning yield which is really really nice in the phantom ecosystem uh there there's geist right uh, i mentioned geist before they have roughly four and a half billion dollars tvl and my personally my favorite farm on the I, I guess my second favorite farm after DeFi kingdoms in all of crypto is the abracadabra farm on phantom where i can deposit stable coins right this lp deposited this you, you essentially deposit uh, usdc into a uh, in the curve and then you get the lp tokens that you stake it in here and you earn uh this fluctuates like roughly 30 percent on stable coins right and i'm bullish on spell which is you know the native token for abracadabra and if i can farm a token that i'm bullish on earn 30 percent on dollars uh that i think that on an asset that i think will appreciate over time then you know it's just amazing right because i use bitcoin and eat this collateral borrow against it and then farm spell in the solana ecosystem right you, you kind of get the trend right like on any essentially any chain you can use uh, Bitcoin or this collateral, right? On Geist, you can use Phantom as collateral. So uh, I guess the native gas token uh, has more utility in that sense. In the Solana ecosystem, there's uh, this app called port.finance, right? Uh, you can use, you know, all these assets as the collateral. Uh, there's also Sol Lend. Uh, you can use all these assets as collateral, right? Uh, I've been covered, I'm not an expert in the Solana ecosystem, but I'm sure there are a bunch of posit a bunch of like really uh, good yield farms out there too. Obviously, the Terra ecosystem, there's Anchor, right? We love Anchor. Right now, you can be paid to borrow, meaning that you can use your Luna or ETH as collateral, borrow against it. You'll pay 24.5% interest to borrow UST, but Anchor will pay you 27% paid in the Anchor token, right? So you're essentially being paid to borrow. This used to be like 100% like a couple months ago, but obviously, everyone is planning in on this opportunity and the rates have diluted. But, you know, if you're bullish on Luna, you can use Luna as collateral. Uh, borrow UST against it and then deposit it into Anchor Earn, earn earning 19.5%, right? Uh, so uh, this is one of the reasons why Luna has gained so much TVL, so much traction, because you know, this opportunity is amazing. And I'm in it too. Lastly, Harmony. Uh, so Harmony does not have a trusted money market yet, but there is one launching on the 31st uh, at the end of the month. Uh, you're going to have to do your own research right, on this. Uh, 
uh, because they are they are not like they're like a lesser known right uh, I believe they're a fork of compound um, but you know this is launching on the 31st and I'm sure this will be a positive catalyst for the entire ecosystem uh, because you no know, money markets tend to lock in a bunch of TBL so in summary and conclusion you know focusing on collateral collateralizable assets uh, since you know it gives me more utility so I'll less be in, I'll, I'll be less interested in like super volatile altcoins but more interested in you know these collateralizable assets because you know if it goes down, I'm less inclined to sell. And you know, even if it goes up, I don't need to, I guess, sell to enter new opportunities because I can borrow against it. This additional utility, right? We always have to think about the utility of the assets in DeFi allows me to farm without taking on capital gains, which I consider to be plus EV, which is positive expected value. Because uh, when, whenever you enter, when, whenever you enter a new opportunity, you have to like weigh the expected value of certain outcomes. Uh, so you're not like you're making the most, uh, I guess, sound decision. Um, and, and, and last slide, since DeFi gives you so much yield, you know, I, I mentioned this earlier, but like delaying taxes 12 months means that you're able to earn yield for an extra 365 days, right? So assuming uh, you're assuming, uh, let's assume, um, you know, you're you're in the 20% tax category, uh, you know, and you have 20% uh, capital gains territory, it's just, it's just like simplifying, uh, and you have $10,000 in capital gains. Well, if you take profits this year, then you have to pay $2,000 to the tax man. However, if you take profits, um, Next year, right? You don't have to pay two thousand dollars to the IRS, and the additional two thousand dollars you can use in DeFi to yield farm with, right? So that's kind of the mentality that I have. Um, yes, I'm gonna take opportunities if presented to me. However, you know, right now it feels like it's the time to focus on the majors. It's time to focus on the higher altcoin or sorry, higher market cap altcoins, just because of the the whole tax implication aspect. So hopefully this video is useful. Thank you guys for watching. Um, and if you want to know how I'm navigating the markets, please check out the private discord link will be in the description below. Thank you for watching and have fun farming out there.